Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast. I am Larry Hutton and this is Limitless Life where we learn how to take all the limits off our lives by looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the creator of all mankind, the creator of all things. I mean, he's pretty amazing when you actually learn about him, how he wants to live in you and live through you so that you have the kind of life that you've been seeking all your life. Everybody, whether they're, uh, no matter where they're at, where they're living, what kind of culture they're in, everybody wants to be happy. Everyone, everybody wants to have joy and peace and have fun in life, be fulfilled. Everybody, every human being. And so uh, Jesus is that way. He is that way. He is that truth. And he is that life that everybody's been seeking for. I was thinking about um, the fact that 2 Peter 1.3 says God's given us all things that pertain to our lives and living godly. But it's through the knowledge of Jesus. You know, I was thinking about before I came on the air, I was thinking about that passage there. And, and even the uh, previous verse, is, it says grace and peace are multiplied to you through the knowledge of Jesus. And I was thinking, you know, I, I lived my life for many years, just my emotions, my feelings dominated my life just like anybody else. You know, bad temper, anger, stress, worry, guilt, shame, you know, you name every negative emotion that all, we all deal with, you know, depression, discouragement, frustration, just all those negative emotions, hurt feelings. I was, I was subject to them and lived according to those feelings for 20 some years until I had a supernatural experience with the Lord where he taught me how to live in divine peace and joy all the time, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And after he showed me how to do it, all he did was, he came in my room, I didn't see him, like some people have said, well, Larry saw Jesus. No, I didn't see Jesus, but I know I came in my room and I heard him speak to me. And he said this, he said, I'm gonna show you in my word what to do, and if you'll do it, you'll never have another down day the rest of your life. And he went on and, and said, you'll never have any more stress-filled, strife-filled days, you'll never have any more depression-filled days, discouragement-filled days, never have any more get-your-feeling-hurt-filled days. All those days of negative emotions, flying off the handle, bad temper, anger, all that stuff, he said, it's all going to be gone. He said, you'll experience a moment of each of those different feelings. He said, but when they come, I'm going to show you what to do so they can't stay in your life. And so I've done that now. I started, I did it one day at a time, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day at a time for many years now. <laughs> I, I, after doing it for one day for 365 one days, I realized after doing it a year, man, this, this is the life to live. A life that's fun, happy, fulfilled, a life of peace, a life of joy. And he showed me how to do it. So I was just thinking about that because 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 2 says, Grace and peace are multiplied to you through the knowledge of Jesus. It was knowledge. When I got knowledge of what God said in His Word about what Jesus did at the cross, so then I, my faith could be in grace, grace was released, and that's what empowered me to live free from depression, free from discouragement, free from bad temper, free from hurt feelings, free from stress, free from worry. I just don't have those days anymore. But what happened was I got knowledge of what Jesus did at the cross. That's what we're all about on this program is teaching that knowledge. If you don't have my book, by the way, in case somebody's watching and say, hey, uh, all that stuff you just said about living in peace and joy and living free from feelings controlling you and all that stuff, I want it. Well, it's in my book, Internal Affairs. Emotional Stability in an Unstable World. That's the subtitle. So if you want to order the book at LarryHutton.org, just go to Larry Hutton. Dot org and you can order the book Internal Affairs. If you want the teachings that go along, along with it uh, in audio form like CDs or MP3s, it is called Free From Me. So that's the series that goes with the book and it covers some things the book doesn't, the book covers some things the CD or the MP3s don't. So I would get both if, if you can. Uh, but get a hold of the book Internal Affairs and then the recordings, the audio recordings of um, free from me. And I teach all that, how you can live free from your feelings, control it. You can control how you feel. You dictate how you feel. Amen. So let's go back to the series that we began uh, 50 weeks ago. This is the end of our 50 of the week today. Uh, today is my 250th lesson. It's a three-part series that I have uh, 
divided into part A and part B and part C. Part A, I call this the A, B, C's of true Christianity, because part A tells you all about who you are in Jesus. Part B tells you about all that he's given you because you're in him. And then part C is all that he's enabled you to do. And so when you put the three parts together, it is the alphabet of heaven. I, could have, I guess I could have titled the series that maybe next time, the alphabet of heaven. But anyway, I've called it the A, B, C's of true Christianity. Part A is what God has made you. Part B is what God has given you. And part C is what God has enabled you to do. Uh, so we covered in part A, we covered 23 things that God has made you. In part B, we covered 23 things that God has given you. And then the last 18 weeks, we have actually been t teaching part C, the third part of the series, what God has enabled you to do. Our foundation text has been 1 John 4:17. Uh, the latter part of the verse says, as he is, so are we in this world. And so let's continue our part C of this series. What has God enabled you to do as a child of God? As a child of God that is now part of the family of God, as, a, as one that is joined to the Lord and you're one with the Lord, Paul said to the Corinthian church, so one with the Lord, you are one spirit with him and uh, he's in you and you're in him. I mean, with all of that, so what are you enabled to do? Number one, you are enabled, and this is God. God has enabled you to live free from sin. Number two, God has enabled you to keep your life from falling apart. Number three, God has enabled you to love everyone all the time. That means you can live in love and walk in love to those that treat you wrong. If they treat you right, you, of course, it's easy to walk in love. Then Jesus said that, oh, what, what reward do you have if you just love those that are lovely, right? So we're talking about you can live in love. God has enabled you to walk in love and live in love 24-7, 365, regardless of how people treat you. You have that ability. And then number four, God has enabled you to overcome everything in life that tries to overcome you. Number five, God has enabled you to control your body. Number six, God has enabled you to have a healthy physical body. You can walk and live your life on earth in divine health. And then number seven, the one that we're on right now, God has enabled you to prosper financially. He's actually given you the ability to partake of all the riches and material things that he created for you. And that's important to know that God did not create the, the wealth of the earth and all the wonderful stuff in the earth for the devil. God created it for his kids and that's you and me. So we've been using 3 John verse 2 as a text for that where he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We found out that literally means he's talking to you and me as a beloved, as a child of God. And he says, I wish, King James says, I wish. Actually, the Greek says, I pray and I will. So this is my prayer for you and my will for you. How many of you like to know the will of God? I like to know the will of God. So if you're wanting to know the will of God like I'm always wanting to know, then I read the will. And when I see God say something like this, I will above all things that you prosper and be. Okay, this is God's will for me, so I don't have to pray. If it be thy will, I'll just go ahead and accept the will, right? Isn't that how you released faith to receive saving grace? As you found out it was his will to save everybody. Otherwise, you couldn't have prayed, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You would have had to, have, if you didn't know it was God's will to save everybody, God so loved the world that he gave and that whosoever believes, right? If you didn't know that, then you'd have to pray, Lord, if it be thy will, save me. And how would you ever know? Well, I guess I'd have to wait till I get to heaven, get to the pearly gates to see if Peter will let me in. <laughs> nope, it won't work that way, honey. I know you have to accept Jesus. And once you find out he is the savior of the world, he gave his life for ransom of all mankind. When you find that out, like Romans 10, 13, whosoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. You find out God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You find out the Bible said God wills that all men be saved. Once you find out all these verses, then all you have to do is call on Jesus. And then your faith that you believed he would save you when you called on him received his saving grace. Well, it's the same way in every other area, including the financial grace that's available from God is when Jesus went to the cross, 
He bore your sins. He bore your sicknesses, we already found out. He bore your poverty and lack. He bore every curse for you or else he didn't do uh, as much as he's been given credit for because if he's called the last Adam and he undid everything the first Adam did, well, the first Adam caused poverty and sickness and despair and fear and everything, every curse to come in. Well, the last Adam has done it all. That's why when Jesus said, it is finished, he was letting us know, I have repaired and restored, repaired, first of all, everything the first one messed up, the first Adam, I am the last Adam, I've repaired it all, I've fixed it all, and I've even given you more. And then when you read, of course, Hebrews 8, 6, you find out we're under a better covenant established on better promises. We are under a better covenant than, than uh, Adam was. Amen. So anyway, we looked at um, a number of scriptures, but that one has been our kind of text. I, I, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. And we found out the word prosper does include, it's not just money, but it includes all the financial provision you need and material possessions that you need. And then we looked at Matthew 6, that goes along with that, where Jesus said, listen, if you'll seek first me and my, my way of doing things, seek first the kingdom of God. So seek me and my way of doing things. Then all of the things, the housing, the eating, the clothing, all the stuff will be added to you. And then we looked at Proverbs 3 where he said, if you'll trust me with all your heart and acknowledge me in all your ways, I'll direct your paths. And then just a couple verses later, he said, if you'll honor me with your money, I'll fill your bank accounts with plenty. So we've already seen all that. And then we ended, uh, well, we ended in Deuteronomy 8, but right before we went to Deuteronomy 8, we went to Genesis 14 and 15 where we saw Abraham honored God and he tithed. He took the ten, first 10% of his income and gave it to God. And there was no law. He didn't have to do it. He, he wasn't required to do it. He did it out of a heart. And, and that's, what, that's the difference from tithing under the law, the Mosaic law, which commands one of the 613 commandments is tithing. You have to tithe or, or you're robbing God. Whereas under Abraham's covenant, he didn't have to tithe. And under the new covenant, grace, you don't have to tithe. Covenant, the, covenant of Ab the Abrahamic covenant was a covenant of grace. The covenant you and I are under are a covenant of grace. That's why the Abrahamic covenant was called an everlasting covenant. Did you notice Moses' covenant was never called an everlasting one? No, it was done away with when a better covenant came. But the, most, but the Abrahamic covenant was called everlasting because it was a covenant of grace. And just like us, under the new covenant, Abraham believed and it was accounted to him. See, that's a picture of faith and grace. Believing is faith. Grace is God's enablement uh, to give you what you're believing for. And so uh, we saw in Genesis 14, Genesis 15, that Abraham tithed. And then after he did that, and then after he told the king of Sodom, I am not going to take anything that's yours. God's the one that owns all the gold, the silver, the cattle on a thousand hills. I'm not taking anything unless you, because then you might think you're able to say you made Abraham rich. No, I'm letting you know my God has made me rich and he'll keep making me rich and it, I don't need you to do it. After he did all that, he tithed to God. He gave God the first 10% of his income. Then in Genesis 15, 1, God spoke to him and said, I am going to be your exceeding great reward. So because of his faithfulness with his money matters, God was able to say, now I am going to give you more than you can imagine. Because if you look up exceeding great reward, the word reward means wages, salary, compensation. Exceeding great is, you, you and I could say it this way, 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 way too much. Abraham, I'm going to give you way, 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 way too much. I'm going to be your El Shaddai, not your El Cheapo. <laughs> so, so we looked at that, found out. And then if you study Abraham's life out in today's standards, he was a multi-billionaire. B with a billion with a B. <laughs> Amen. And then we ended in Deuteronomy 8 because we're talking about God has enabled you to partake of all the wealth and riches that he created for you. So look at Deuteronomy 8, 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers. So we found out the word power means he's given you the means, he's given you the capacity, he's given you the ability, he's given you the substance, he's given you everything you need to produce and get and have wealth. And he said that he may establish 
His covenant. So God has given every one of us the ability to produce wealth in our individual lives. You have the ability just as much as I have. We have the ability just as much as anybody else has. So it's important to know that. And we found out to establish His covenant meant He wants you blessed first, and then He wants to give you favor and more influence into more people's lives so that you can be a greater blessing. That's the threefold blessing of Abraham that belongs to us. And that is really the, the true, uh, the truth, I should say, of true biblical prosperity. Number one, God wants you blessed because He loves you. Number two, so that He can give you more influence into people's lives. And number three, so that you can be a greater blessing. Amen. I notice Liz and I, the, the richer that Lord has made us, the greater blessing we've been able to be, be to places. You know, when you could just give, let's say, for example, a missionary needed 10000 to buy a new vehicle over in a third world country somewhere, and I was able to send him $10. Well, I'm going to get a reward for that if that's all, if that's generous giving and if that's all I have to give, but I give it and everybody else does theirs and God adds it all up and the missionary gets the car, that's great, right? But what if there weren't very many people besides me giving $10, just a few other? Then the missionary has to wait years, sometimes years, before he can get the car and he needs it now. But then as God's able to bless you more and more and more, then what if I'm able to to the, I find out the missionary needs 10000 and I can write out the $10,000 check. I'm not giving any more than I did when I was $10. At $10, I was faithful, but now I have the 10000 so I'm going to be faithful with it. But my point is we can do more the more we have. So we don't desire the wealth for covetous reasons. Listen to what I'm saying. We don't desire wealth for covetous reasons. We, de we desire it for covenant reasons. And our covenant is God wants me blessed, number one, because He loves me. Number two, He wants His favor and grace to flow through me so that I have more influence into more people's lives. And then number three is so that I can be a greater blessing. I can bless those missionaries and bless my pastor in my local church and bless t television ministries that are preaching good news like myself and Andrew Walmack and Bob Yandian and different Kenneth Copeland, different ones that are preaching the truth that, that we need to hear. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to look at another uh, passage of scripture here that God has given us the ability to acquire wealth, the ability to produce wealth. And we're going to look at that here in a, in a passage that, that's really a proverb. And you're going to see something in, in uh, this passage. So let's turn over to Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to start reading in verse 14 down to verse 29. So this may take more than one program. If it does, that's fine because you're going to get some good stuff out of this. Matthew 25, 14 through 29. Verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents. To another he gave two talents. And to another one talent. To each according to his own ability. And then he went on his journey immediately. Then verse uh, 16, Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them, and made another five talents. In other words, he took the talents, and traded means he bought and sold. That's what trading means. So he bought and sold. It doesn't say he just bought one thing, traded, and doubled his money, but it sounds like uh, he took the five talents, went and traded them. So it sounds like this was over a little process of time, right, that he traded, buying and selling, and, and then it says he made another five talents. So that's good, good, uh, good investing, right? Good Good wisdom there, uh, trading. Verse 17, likewise, he who had received two, talking about two talents, gained two more also. So he did the same thing. He took his two talents. Maybe he took one of them and traded for some stuff. And then when he got that back, he took another one, traded for some stuff. And then before he knew it, he had doubled his money. And it says he had gained two more also. Then verse 18, but he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, so in other words, the one the guy that got the one talent did not buy and sell. He did not trade. He just took that that he had, put it in the ground and covered it up and didn't do anything with it. All right, so verse 19, After a long time, the Lord of those servants came 
and settled accounts with them. Hmm, settled accounts. Verse 20, so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. So he was letting the, the Lord know, Lord, you gave me five. You entrusted me to do something with. I, I want you to see what I did. I obeyed you. I multiplied it. Look, here it is. And he gave him uh, the ten talents. And the Lord said to him in verse 21, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then, verse 22 said, He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, look, 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 you gave me two and you entrusted me with two. Look, I've gotten two more besides that. So I have also, just like him, doubled my money. And the Lord said to him in verse 23, Well done, good and faithful servant. Sounds like a broken record here. You ruler, uh, uh, you have been faithful over a few things. Same thing he said to the other guy. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then, verse 24, he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered seed. And I was afraid, verse 25, so I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. In other words, look, it's not missing. I didn't lose it. Here, here, see right here. There it is, Lord. That, that belongs to you, and I'm just returning it to you. But his Lord answered, look at verse 26, and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. Now, he didn't call him, he didn't call him some foreigner or stranger. He called him a servant. He was one of his servants. And he said, you're wicked and you're lazy. You knew that I, had, that I reap where I have not sown, and you knew I gather where I've not scattered seed, so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received, my, received back my own with interest. So in other words, he's saying the least you should have done. Notice he, he didn't say, now if you wanted to hear well done, thou good and faithful, the least you should have done. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that you would be hear me right now. You'd be hearing me say good, well done, thou good and faithful. So he was not going to hear that by doing this. But he said, this is the least you should have done is you should have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, then I would have at least gotten interest on it. So. Then look at what Jesus said in verse 28. We say Jesus, of course, Jesus is teaching the parable here. So take the talent from him, the one that wasn't faithful, that didn't do anything with the talent. Take that from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. We'll talk about that later on. For, verse 29, to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. That proves to us Jesus is not against us having abundance in any realm. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. Whew. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Interesting statement to everyone who has, more is going to be given. And, and he's going to have abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has is going to be taken away. Now, you know, all the verses that we've looked at already concerning God wanting you to prosper, and if you seek him and all the stuff being added to you and multiplied to you, it obviously was not talking about somebody that won't seek God, that won't do what God, that won't increase, that won't stretch out there and not fear. This guy feared, and so he said, oh, I feared, so I hid everything. Obviously, all the scriptures we've looked at, if you use scripture to interpret scripture, God wanted this guy to increase just like everybody else. He had the talents. We're going to get into this next program. He had the talents to do it, but he didn't do it. And so then Jesus said, you know what? Even what I've given you, is going to be taken away. 
because you were not faithful. We can easily ascertain by Jesus telling the other two guys, well done, thou good and faithful, then he was telling this guy, not well done, you were not faithful. And I don't know about you, but I want to hear when I come to the end of my journey and we stand before the, the, the Lord, the King of kings and Lord of lords, I want to hear, well done. Don't you? I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant and faithful son. He'll probably say son or daughter to us. Well done, son. Well done, daughter. But you know what he's also going to say? But you also were a faithful servant because you served Jesus to the world. Now we're going to talk about detail about this parable next because this was a parable. I'm not going to, well, I won't say anything. I'm going to get into this parable, but I'm going to show you something in the natural about the parable that's really going to give you some understanding about buying and selling, investing, and increasing your income. Jesus actually deals with that in the parable. And I'm going to show you how the natural side does apply to us as well. So make sure you don't miss next program. Praise God. We're out of time. We love you. We call you blessed. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for praying for us. Until next time, have a wonderful Jesus-filled day. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. With your own words, you can release the power of life that will bring health to your body. God's healing grace is released through faith, and faith is released through what you say. Your healing is in your mouth. God wants you to be whole, well, and healthy. But if you have not heard his word on it, how can you have faith to call on him as your healer? These 52 Declare It cards have a healing scripture from God's word on one side and a corresponding declaration of faith which you can speak about yourself on the other. Hearing God's word concerning your healing will build your faith to walk through life in complete confidence that every sickness or disease that ever attacks you must depart. To order your prescription for health declare it cards, go to larryhutton.org or call us at 888-887-WORD. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to larryhutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.